here among you because it's like uh, coming back home. <laughs> and um, I feel very honored to be able to give this talk. Um, almost 10 years ago, I was like you, almost most of you. <laughs> I was a professional on one side, and on the other hand, I was an EMBA student. So uh, it's always a pleasure to come back to the school and to participate to the events. But because tonight it's a woman networking gathering, it's very special to me. So, why did I agree to do this talk? Let's start from the beginning. This is a picture of me when I started my career. I was 23 years old, I had an R&D engineering diploma, and I was working in a great place to work company in telecom industry. I had a lot of fun, I did some research and development, and I launched some products uh, for internet, which are still on the market, by the way. I had a lot of fun, but um, after a few years, I decided to change uh, position, and I had position more business-oriented, so I went through um, operations, so purchasing, I changed industries, and uh, at the end, uh, I worked in uh, financial services in organization and management consulting. But after that, I decided to, ch to change again. And now, as Ines was telling you, now I'm a coach. And one of my favorite field of work is to work with women, because what I do is that I support women in all the issues relating to the career. And um, the women who come, they have different experiences, different positions, they come from different industries but they all have the same very strong desire to have both professional and personal accomplishment. And when I talk about personal accomplishment, that does not mean always baby and family, no, not always. And actually, behind these two words, everyone can put different things. But what I can see is that no matter what you put behind these two words, women have to struggle and to overcome some difficulties. And they have to overcome these difficulties <coughs> only because they are women. So I'm very pleased today to share with you some insights about what prevents women from becoming leaders. And when we talk about leadership, what comes to my mind is that there is two mirages. The first one is that we have people who think that Leaders are born leaders. You know, some people would thought that, well, you are born leaders, so you're naturally charismatic, you are more extrovert than an introvert, then you speak easily to people. Well, everything is easy for you when you're a born leader. So that's a quite sad vision, and uh, it's an outdated one, hopefully, even though there are still some people who think like that. But a newer vision is to say that we can train people to be a leader. But I think it's also a mirage. And I'm not saying that executive education or leadership programs are useless. No, it's very much valuable and that's why you're here. So if you have any opportunity, just go for it. But what I think is that this is not the answer to have women at the top. If you look at some figures, and here you have some figures, I don't know if you can see, <coughs> You have figures uh, from uh, big French companies, so for a company from the CAC 40, even though it's a French one, these numbers are, would be the same in an American you know, or APAC a, a, a company. So what you can see easily is that the higher you go, the fewer women you see. And definitely and unfortunately, it's not a matter of training. So what do I see uh, as roadblocks when women come to me? Surprise, surprise, work-life balance. When we know that in average, women will spend per day three hours and a half on household chores instead of two hours for men, it's not a surprise that a lot of women will come to me with some difficulty um, for work-life balance. The second one, not a surprise, they have to face stereotypes. But there are also two other more, which are more internal roadblocks, which are more psychological roadblocks. The, uh, the fact that they sometimes feel not legitimate uh, in their position, even though they have very good position, they feel not legitimate. 
and they also have to struggle with some limiting beliefs that most of the time come from their education. Can you raise your hands if some of this sounds familiar to you? <laughs> so, almost everyone except Antonio. <laughs> I'm having experiences. <laughs> so, this being said, how to overcome these roadblocks and to unlock your potential. On this one, I'm not going to go general, but I'd rather share my own experience with you. So when I look back to my career, I would say that five ingredients made my journey possible. The first one, engagement and hard work, not a surprise. Intuition and decisions, opportunities, willingness to test and willingness to fail and to learn. And last, but the most important one to me, authentic and valuable connections. What are the differences between these two pictures? It's 17 years. <laughs> <laughs> I take it as a compliment. <laughs> yeah, so you can say hairstyle, makeup, the smile, the posture. But, and all these are true, but there is something very different that you cannot see. And it is the story I tell myself between these two pictures. So story I tell myself. When I was younger, I was a good <coughs> professional. I've, I think that I've always been a good professional. My boss, my colleagues, even my HR was telling me that I was a good professional. And I also had some evidences because I found some patent uh, quite fast after my, my start of career. And still, even though I had all these evidences, I was keeping acting in a such way. I would always lower myself when I, I assess myself. I would never negotiate for myself. And when the success would come, I would often attribute the success to some external factors. It was because I had a great team or because I was very lucky, so chance was my best friend. <coughs> and I was uh, the typical uh, professional woman who worked hard, well, I would prepare all my cases and one day I did the same, I was about to do the same, so I prepared my case for a big negotiation, I gathered all the material, did the presentation and I was about to do what I was used to do, that means hand it over to my senior manager. <coughs> so I went to my boss and said, okay, we're going to fly to, to Hong Kong, this is all the presentation, you have all you need for the negotiation. And my boss asked me, who do you think is the best person to negotiate this deal? Who knows the case? And actually, that question and the answer was so far from what I was able to consider that it took me minutes you know, to, to put everything on the right way and I did not even answer. And my boss told me, well, keep the material because you're the one who's gonna need it. So we flew and um, I was sit, I was at the table for the negotiation and at the table, I was the only female under my 30s, around, surrounded with all the senior managers and VPs. But my boss was right. I knew I was scared, but I knew my case, and I did it. I closed the deal. So from <coughs> this day, I started to change the story I tell myself. So from assessing myself lower, from feeling not legitimate or not deserving, anything and from attributing my success to some external factors I develop some kind of okiness with myself so now I'm okay with my areas of improvement but I'm also very okay with my own success and that makes a huge difference so there's a lot of roadblocks on the path to leadership for women but there's one on which you have control on it's all the it's the little story you tell yourself and um, because certainly because I'm a coach my tip for you tonight is to change and to reframe this story and to turn it into questions and that's because I'm a coach so 
How do we make that? Um, let's take the example of work-life balance. So women that come to me would have the same story and the story will be, it's difficult to have the work-life balance. I would like to have a work-life balance. I need to improve the work-life balance. And my advice, what my tip would be to turn that into questions. So you can question yourself or you can question also your partner. Because when you are said to yourself, I need to or I have to change my work-life balance, nothing will happen. But when you start to come to your partner and ask him, how can we do, how can you support me so that I can improve my work-life balance, then you will start to move forward. Another example, uh, if you are, um, uh, if we talk about the internal uh, roadblocks like imposter uh, syndrome or limiting belief, maybe uh, you will, your little story would be, well, I'm not experienced enough to do I don't know what, I'm not prepared enough to do I don't know what, or, so it works with I, I'm not whatever to. And this, you can change it also by a question. How can I do in order to be prepared enough to? And this is where you start to move forward. So, I think that you've got my point here. There's a lot of roadblocks, and, but I strongly believe that when we talk about stereotypes, it's a big deal and it's a big fight to change what's in the mind of, of the people. But there's, from, for a start, there's the one thing you can change and you have control of is all the bias and all the stereotypes you have integrated yourself. And it's not easy. Uh, it's not easy to challenge yourself, but listen to your little voice, pay attention, and that will be the start for a change. And I strongly believe that in order to move forward on this topic, we can rely on our pairs and definitely women network are the great places for us to develop on this topic. Because women networks are places where we support each other and where we can connect with an authentic and true uh, connection. So this uh, being said, this was the part for the food for thought. In order to land for on something more specific to you, I would like to propose you to go through a little exercise.